Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Hawaii ACIC Virtual College Fair. We've got an exciting session today, but before we begin, begin we'll cover a few housekeeping items. Note that if you have questions, you can use the Q&A button to type your question to the presenter at any time. Also note that your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists can't see or hear you. Be advised that there's additional sessions available on the StriveScan website, so if you have interest in those, sign up at your leisure. Finally, note that the recording of this session will be available on the StriveScan website at strivescan.com slash Hawaii. With those items out of the way, we'll turn it over to our first presenter from Eastern Oregon University. Hello everyone, my name is Genesis Medards and I am the Director of Admissions at Eastern Oregon University. And I'm really excited to share information about EOU with you all. I'm a little bummed that we can't do it in person, but I'm really excited to um, connect with you all virtually. So the video you see here is, it might be a little choppy on your end as is the case with videos through Zoom. Um, but this is the Eastern Oregon University campus. We are a small university, which I'll talk about in a moment, but our campus has about 120 acres. So it's pretty big um, campus, but the student population is small. All right, we are located on the Eastern side of the state. So when I'm in Hawaii, many um, students, when they think of universities in Oregon, they think of the west side of the state. Um, but we're on the other side of the state, really close to Idaho. And we are in a small town called La Grande. Um, we're in a valley that's completely surrounded by mountains. We have hiking everywhere. We have a ski resort. You can see here we have um, a local lake. And this lake is only about a 10, 15 minute drive from campus. Um, and like I said, we're located in La Grande and La Grande only has about 13,000 people. Our student population on campus is about 1600. So we're very much a small school in a small town. If you Google us, you might see online that we have over 3000 students, but know that we do have um, an online campus, but on the EOU campus in person for face to face, and we only have about 1600 students. We have been open the entire pandemic. So um, we went remote a little bit last spring, but we've been open since um, classes started this fall. And we've done it successfully. And we hope to continue being in person offering face to face classes next fall. Our average class size is exactly 23. So again, very much a small school in the mountains. Here's a listing of our popular programs. Our most popular program is business administration. And within business, there are several different concentrations. You can go into leadership, organization and management, marketing, accounting. And like I said, that's our most popular program. Um, but we also uh, have a really great education program. So if you're looking to be a teacher, you can get your bachelor's, your master's, and your license licensure in five years. So the master's program is a one-year program, and a lot of future educators select EOU because of that master's program. And you can see here we have um, sciences for students who want to go into the pre-health professions. We have uh, programs for you as well. And um, we have a lot of student support services available. So if you need assistance um, academically, or if you need to connect with the healthcare provider, know that all of the student support services that you can think of um, are available to you at Eastern Oregon University. We have a lot of clubs and organizations. Um, we have academic clubs, social clubs, and cultural clubs. Students do have the opportunity to study in another country while attending EOU. And um, as I've said a couple of times now, we are in the mountains. And because of that, there are a lot of outdoor activities. 
that are available to students. We have an outdoor adventure program where you can get free rentals. Um, if you need a kayak or a canoe or even like a tent or a sleeping bag or a ski coat, you can get all of that free through our outdoor adventure program. And you also have the opportunity to take um, outdoor adventure classes for college credit at EOU. We have 15 athletic programs. We just added men's baseball this year, as well as women's lacrosse. All of our on-campus um, residence halls are suite style. So we don't have any residence halls where um, the women all use this restroom on floor one, and then the second floor, all the men use a restroom and with a lot of bunk beds in the shared space. Again, it's all suite style, so you walk in. And as you see here, there's a kitchen and a living room, and then there are different um, bedrooms. You can get a single, a double, or a triple, but you still will be in your suite. All right, tuition for um, Hawaii students is $13,000, and this includes tuition and fees for the full academic year for WUI school. So if you're admitted to EOU, you automatically get a WUI rate. And um, the last thing I'll say is our admissions process is very simple. You apply to EOU. Um, there's a $50 application fee. Uh, if you uh, can't afford that, or if you qualify for a NACAC fee waiver, we will waive um, and defer your application fee. And then we need an official copy of your transcript and um, then we'll give you an admissions decision. If you have any questions, um, you will have my contact information and please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm happy to answer any questions you have about Eastern Oregon University. Thank you. Thanks so much. We're on to our second institution, the University of Hawaii at Manoa, Tim School. Aloha, welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for carving out some time of your day to be here. My name is Carissa. I'm an academic advisor and the interim director of our TIM Office of Student Academic Services. Um, I'm here to share three things with you today. The first thing I want to talk about is what is the travel industry? The second thing I wanted to talk about is why should you study travel industry management? And the third thing that I wanted to talk about is specifically why should you study travel industry management at the Tim School, at the Scheidler College of Business, at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. So first off, why should you study travel industry management? So I think the easiest way is to give you a quick example or tell a story about the travel industry, about you visiting the island of Oahu uh, to go on a campus tour of the UH Manoa campus. So let's say you're flying in from Maui and your parents decide you're gonna make a mini vacation and spend some time on Oahu. So you get to the airport by calling a cab. As soon as you get to the airport, you check in, turn in your luggage, get on the plane, and then you arrive on Oahu after a short flight later. Upon arrival to Oahu, your parents pick up a rental car to drive to your hotel in Waikiki. Upon arrival to your hotel, you check in and you get settled in your hotel room. After settling in, you decide to lounge by the pool by your, while your parents decide to go play golf. Later on that evening, after everyone arrives back to the hotel, your parents decide to have a nice dinner at a restaurant nearby. The following day, you and your parents decide to walk around Waikiki before your campus visit, going into stores and buying some souvenirs. And later on that afternoon, on your way to the UH Manoa campus for your campus tour, you swing by Rainbow Drive-In to grab a quick bite to eat. So I could continue on with this story, but I'm hoping that you get the gist. Now what I want you to do is think about all the working professionals that made that story happen. Think about the front desk agents at the airport, at the rental car agency, at the hotel. Think about the chef, the servers, the flight attendants, the Expedia site that your parents used to help set up the trip. Think about the managers who ensured that the employees were trained. 
schedules were made and that everybody was available to work. The human resources department who ensured that employee benefits were paid um, and received. And even think about the marketing department who created an ad that popped up on your Instagram feed, which led you into thinking about studying at UH Manoa. So all of this is a part of the travel industry and believe it or not, that's just a small fraction. And that leads me to my second point, which is why should you study travel industry management or TIM? So I would say if any part of that story seemed interesting enough to you that you could see yourself possibly working and having a career in the travel industry, then you should definitely consider studying TIM. Students who pursue a profession in TIM have the opportunity to help and work with people in a creative and diverse environment that comes with a lot of variety. And of course, there's travel. A degree in TIM can take you all over the world. So why should you study TIM at UH Manoa? That brings me to my third point. So first off has to be location. So while the COVID-19 pandemic has been forcing the tourism industry in Hawaii to evolve, in the end, tourism is still going to be here. And in fact, this is the perfect time for the industry to be infused with fresh new blood, with new ideas that can help push the industry forward via sustainable practices or maybe even an understanding of the local culture. Hawaii is a tourism destination, and how can we help it to continue to evolve? Additionally, the Tim School has a required internship and career development component, Approximately 150 TIM major students are in internships every semester, and students can earn credit for internship experiences and participate in networking and professional development opportunities, while also gaining practical experience for the travel industry. TIM also provides a lot of financial support to students, both incoming and continuing. For the 2019-2020 school year, we awarded over $200,000 worth of scholarships to 75 TIM major students. TIM students are also able to participate in our annual Shiler Scholarship Brunch, where they have the opportunity to network with their scholarship donor. And we also have a Shiler Business Night, where we recognize outstanding TIM students and present them with monetary awards. TIM also has a lot of opportunities for student co-curriculars, so that includes eight student clubs. Through these student clubs, they also host socials, they go on trips, they participate in community service and networking events, and also go on site visits. Students also have the opportunity to study abroad as well too. We have partner schools throughout Eastern Asia where students can study hospitality, tourism, or transportation management. And we also have scholarship opportunities to help fund your study abroad experiences. We have other additional support services, including our freshman mentorship program and our annual industry networking event called Nakukui NetLinks. Students who pursue degrees at TIM earn a Bachelor's of Science degree in Travel Industry Management and can focus their studies in either Hospitality Management or Tourism and Transportation Management. The degree is also set up for students to graduate in four years. Additionally, the TIM degree is built on a business foundation, meaning that the coursework taken is transferable across business industries. For admissions, we are open enrollment, so if you are an incoming freshman or transfer student, you just need to apply to UH Manoa and meet the UH Manoa admissions criteria and select travel industry management as your program of study on the application. If you're interested in learning more about Tim, please feel free to reach out to me directly. You can also drop a question into the Q&A. You can send me an email or follow us on social media. Otherwise, thank you again for your time, and I hope to see you all at UH Manoa Tim School, and have a great remainder of your Saturday. Thanks, everybody. We're on to our next presenter from the University of Hawaii, West Oahu. Hi everyone. Thank you for taking time out of your, of your weekend to be with us today. My name is Michelle Adorno-Cohen and I'm the Director of Admissions at the University of Hawaii, West Oahu. Some of you may know that we are part of the University of Hawaii system. Um, University of Hawaii system has 10 campuses and we are one of the campuses. Um, we're located in, on Oahu in the city of Kapolei. So that is over on the west side. Um, for those of you who are familiar, we're um, a little bit past the Kamakana Ali Mall. And we are among uh, the smaller campuses. We have an enrollment of a little bit over 3,000 students. Um, if you are looking for 
um, kind of that small campus, small community feel, um, we might be an option for you. Um, our class size, average class size is about 20 students. Um, classes never go larger than 40 students, and that's because all the classrooms were built with a maximum of 40 seats in each classroom. So we like to keep it small and, um, and um, <clears throat> intimate for you. Um, if you decide to, um, to come to UH West Oahu, you'll find that it's a very personalized and individualized um, experience. Um, we're going to start you off with an orientation program um, that is going to assign you to um, a mentor, and you'll be part of a small um, uh, mentoring group that will um, support you throughout the orientation program during the first week of school and throughout the year in continuing orientation programs. Um, another example of kind of the, the very personalized um, support that you'll have while you're, sorry, that kind of <laughs> um, while you're with us is that we have a um, Noyal Learning Center um, that supports our students by um, providing tutoring. Um, if you're looking for assistance with um, getting started on a paper, um, editing a resume, um, just want a place to hang out and study with classmates, um, that's a place um, that you'll find really helpful. Um, so we have nine different bachelor of degree programs and within those programs you have 45 different areas to choose from or 45 um, different majors. Um, so let me show you. Um, these are the, the nine different areas um, and you would basically get a bachelor of education, bachelor of education or bachelor of arts and business administration, bachelor of science in natural science, um, etc. And then these are some of the areas that fall within those nine areas. So you get to choose your major. Um, as you can see, many different areas. Um, here's some more. And I know we're going fast, but our website has a lot of detail um, about all of these different areas. Um, in addition to um, the classroom experience, you're going to be able to join student organizations, be part of intramural sports, maybe student government. Um, there's always something going on on campus, um, a lot of social activities, um, a lot of celebrations. Um, so um, it's a nice balance between the classroom experience and um, being part of our community. How to apply, we have an online application and we're looking for a 2.7 GPA and that you've completed your high school credits, which is typically 22 credits. Um, for those of you who are Hawaii residents, the tuition is, um, it's a, it's very, it can be very affordable, uh, a little bit over $7,500. For non, um, non-residents, it's a little bit over $10,000. Um, and as you can see, we do offer scholarships and financial aid. Um, we like to, we're really proud of the fact that um, every year there's something new and exciting that we um, can look forward to at West Oahu. Um, we've recently added the um, programs that you see listed there. We've also expanded our physical campus. We just opened a brand new creative media building that um, supports our creative media program. Um, it's um, state of the art, has a, an indoor theater, an outdoor amphitheater, um, sound production stages, um, Esports arena. I mean, everything to support this really growing area. So, just an example of um, you know all the exciting things that you can look forward to if you come to our campus. Um, and this is just an aerial shot of part of the campus. Um, the colorful glass uh, stained glass window. That's our library. Um, and here's my information. I know we went fast. So, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, shoot me an email. Give us a call. I'm happy to meet with. Um, you and um, chat more about all of our offerings and how we can support you during the application process. Thank you. Thanks so much. We're on to our next presenter from Willamette University. Hi everyone, it's great to speak with you tonight. My name is Mary Randers and I am the Dean of Admission at Willamette University. Hopefully you can see these slides um, that I'll be walking you through tonight. My hope is that in the next few minutes, we'll inspire you to want to spend more time with us, um, which you can do through our daily virtual visit opportunities that we offer at Willamette University. Willamette is located in Salem, Oregon, um, the state capital. Um, it's in the heart of the beautiful Willamette Valley. We're a liberal arts college supported by graduate programs in business, law, theology, and soon the arts, given our merger with the Pacific Northwest College of Art. We're located in a part of the country that is sought after for its natural beauty, diverse ecosystems, outdoor opportunities, and many places to explore. 
Willamette was established as the first university in the Western United States. Um, we actually were founded before Oregon was even a state. Um, and Willamette began to educate and shape innovative leaders right from the very beginning, including our first graduate pictured here, Emily York. I mention our history because it's important to understand Willamette's rich history in order to understand who we are as an institution today. Um, Willamette's legacy of leadership and impact Sorry, I just lost my voice. Um, um, Willamette's legacy of leadership and impact in the community is exactly what current Willamette students find here today. We're a place that takes knowledge and turns it into action and takes you and turns you into a leader. Willamette's motto grounds the Willamette experience in a very real way. Um, our motto, not unto ourselves, alone are we born, sums up what our early alumni knew from their time at Willamette is that we're in this world together our education should be a time when we practice and explore how we'll have an impact on others. And we talk about our motto a lot and continually challenge ourselves to live it in, in varied ways. Limit focuses on providing students both in and outside the classroom um, ways to practice our motto, making positive change through leadership, service, innovation, in the classroom, Willamette students meet in small groups where highly engaged faculty lead primarily experiential based classrooms. Um, we have small classes where groups interact and classes are designed to help students develop important skills that will see them through their lives and careers. Skills like critical thinking, creative problem solving, and the ability to consider varied perspectives, which is so important in today's world. Our faculty are accomplished scholars. They research, write, publish, um, and First and foremost, they show up as teachers. Willamette's faculty serve as mentors, helping students really learn how to learn so they can grow and change as the world changes around them. Um, no matter what, Willamette has had more Oregon Professors of the Year than any other college in the state, which speaks to the quality of education that awaits you at Willamette University. We strongly um, encourage a classroom environment that helps students think about how they're going to apply what they're learning through things like study abroad, hands-on research, internships that are interactive, um, so that Willamette students learn how to apply what they're learning in the classroom to real world experiences and think really critically about how they're gonna contribute into the world around them once they leave our campus. We're in an urban campus setting. Uh, we're in the center of Salem's downtown area. Um, and we're the only campus in the nation that sits directly across the street, actually 76 feet. We measured it um, last year across from the nation's capital. Um, also unique to our location is our proximity to Salem Health, which supports things like pre-medical students or a public health program. Um, Salem Health is one of Oregon's largest hospitals and provides students with that resource as an extension of our classroom experience. We also own 305 acres um, of outdoor learning experience in Xena Forest, and we're co-located with Tokyo International University. Um, each year we bring up over 100 Japanese students to our campus to live and learn. We are the location where those students from TIU come to study abroad, and so your global experiences start from day one as a student at Willamette. Um, we're literally located in in the type of location where students are surrounded by opportunities to extend their learning, um, like I said, outside the classroom, beyond our campus, and we're thinking about how you're going to apply those things as a student out in the world. Willamette encourages applications for students um, from bright, diverse, and prepared experiences. We're test optional. We have, um, do not require uh, an application fee, and we would love to talk more about your interest in our campus and your fit for our campus, um, as I mentioned, through some of our daily visit opportunities that exist for you today. Um, so please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I would love to talk to you more about the opportunities that await you at Willamette, and I'm excited for your college experience that is awaiting you, and I look forward to connecting later um, in this process with you. Mary, thanks so much. We're on to our next presenter from Fresno Pacific University. Hi, 
the timer going. Hey, everybody, thank you for joining us today. Uh, for you students and parents that are here to learn more about the college campuses that are available to you, either in state or out of state, just want to thank you for being here, asking questions, getting informed. And I hope I can spend some time informing you all about Fresno Pacific University. A little bit about myself. My name is Jorge. I'm an admissions counselor. I've been with the university for about four years. Um, and I'll just kind of briefly go over FPU. I know this is these have been speedy presentations, but you know, thank you for, for staying in. A little context about Fresno. Uh, here we are located in Central California, just to kind of give you some context of where we are. The northern uh, major cities like San Francisco, Sacramento are about three hours north, uh, two and a half. Uh, the LA South and then the South Coast area about maybe three or four air, uh, hours away. So just going to give you some context about where we're located. In addition, uh, just east of us, we have a couple national parks, Kings Canyon, Sequoia, and Yosemite National Park, big uh, popular place. Uh, so yeah, that's just kind of where Fresno is at. We're the fifth largest city in California and um, 300 days of sunshine. So yeah, it's it's warm and it's, it's bright out here. So uh, in terms of Fresno Pacific specifically, we're a smaller campus. We have about a thousand undergraduate students. So as you're looking through colleges, um, that's one of like the main uh, things that you'll notice right away about a college, like, you know, how big it is, you know, how many acres does it have, uh, the student population. Uh, and so that might be a factor in you deciding what college you'll attend. You know, do you want a big campus, small campus? You want one that's close to home, far from home. So those are some factors to think about uh, as you're looking at colleges. And FPU specifically, we're a small campus. In addition to that, we're 47% Latinx students. So diversity is big and important here at FPU. And we're very representative of the Central Valley um, population and demographics. A little bit more about the academics at FPU uh, and our... Uh, how we uh, kind of just kind of focus. Uh, we have an 11 to one student to faculty ratio. So when you hear like student to faculty ratio, that's gonna be important in the sense of uh, how maybe much interaction you're gonna receive from faculty. So a smaller ratio is, is good. So I'm glad like, you know, a lot of universities are able to provide that for students and just uh, another important just key uh, as you're looking at colleges. Uh, in addition to that, we have 100 plus areas of study and that's gonna take upon all the different majors and minors and emphasis and everything we have at Fresno Pacific. And uh, here are our top five majors at FPU. These are gonna include psychology, kinesiology, business, communications, pre-health, and some distinct majors to FPU include nursing, liberal arts, if you wanna go into education and software engineering. Now, I, I wanna just take a second to say, uh, if you don't know what you want to major in, if you don't know, you know, at 16, 17, what you want to do with the rest of your life, that's okay. That's definitely okay. Um, I would encourage you to look into your strengths, look into what you're good at, uh, look into what you like studying as something to help you determine that. Um, at FPU, you'll, on the application portion, you'll declare a major, but you can change your major. So that's just one thing I want to say uh, to you students out there who feel like you don't know that's, that's totally okay. Um, you have time and I encourage you to, again, look into those strengths, look into those things that you like studying. At Fresno Pacific, uh, our, uh, we have a four year graduation guarantee. So we can guarantee you graduate in four years. And so why is that important? Well, you don't really wanna spend more time than you need to, spend more money than you need to also um, on the specific timeline that you're on. Um, it's possible to finish within the four years and with our guarantee, uh, if you don't finish in those four years, we will pay for that extra semester that it might take you to finish. Uh, I personally finished in three and a half years at Fresno Pacific. So if you're on some sort of timeline and you wanna finish on time, do consider how long it'll take you to graduate from your university and FPU, we can make sure you finish in four years, if not sooner. Fresno Pacific University is a Christian campus. A common question we get is, do you have to be Christian to attend FPU? You don't have to be Christian to attend FPU. We don't require a statement of faith. Um, and we actually have just a lot of faiths and backgrounds on campus. So that's uh, just a common question we get. We also have an Office of Spiritual Formation that's there to encourage and facilitate the spirituality of our students. So that's definitely available. Um, academics is important, but it's also important that you invest in your uh, university experience. Yes, it's important to you know do the best that you can in your classes, but do engage with the campus or around you, whether by joining clubs, starting clubs, uh, going to intramural student events, different things like that. Your experience is going to be something you invest in. So um, I do encourage you to do that uh, as you're looking at colleges. You know what's something that you see, where somewhere you see yourself at, and and do participate in everything like that. Study abroad opportunities, uh, those are going to be in a couple different 
forms, summer trips, week long spring break trips, uh, winter break trips and semester long trips. These will also apply to your academic uh, educational plan. So you'll take classes and study in those uh, places. I had the opportunity to study in India and Vietnam among uh, some of these that are on this list. There's a lot more countries um, on here. So I would encourage you at what, you know, whatever university you're looking at, uh, check to see if they have study abroad opportunities. It's definitely a great experience. And at FPU, we can ensure uh, you have that opportunity as well. In regards to athletics, we're NCAA Division II. I'll quickly go over our sports. Uh, for the women's sports, here is a list. We have basketball, cross country. Oh, I'm short on time. Uh, men's sports is listed here. In addition, we have uh, music uh, ensembles and theater at Fresno Pacific. Uh, and I just wanna quickly go over the affordability aspect of Fresno Pacific. Um, pain can be a stressful thing and FP does a great job of walking everybody through the process. We have a big academic scholarships and a lot of financial aid. So when I was applying to colleges, I applied in California to the UCs and CSUs and Fresno Pacific and though FPU is a private institution, uh, it was the most affordable. So I'm just gonna go to my last slide with my contact information. Uh, feel free to take a screenshot, follow us on social media, check out our website for more information, but thank you for being here. Thank you so much. We're on to our final presenter from the CSU Maritime Academy. All right, hello everyone, aloha. My name is Mark McGee. I'm Director of Admission at the California State University Maritime Academy. Our friends call us Cal Maritime. California is in our name, but we're definitely Hawaii's Maritime Academy because we're the only school of our type in the western half of the US. And so we cover all the western states and the Pacific Islands and the US territories out into the Pacific as well. So uh, you'll learn that we're a special school, but we do share some traits with the schools you've already heard about. We are also a small school and we are also a very specific school to a set of majors. And you can see just from the photos here, uh, you're gonna get a little bit of uh, introduction to a school that, what, what are they showing? Uh, everyone looks like they're very active, they're in some uniforms, so let's get going. This is our campus, we are in the Bay Area. We're in this town called Vallejo, uh, which is a suburb of San Francisco. And that is our campus uh, from the right to the left, or left to the right. Uh, you can see that water there, that is San Francisco Bay can see one of our athletic fields and you'll see a ship at a dock there in the upper right corner. That is our training ship, the Golden Bear. During the school year, it's just like a regular uh, college campus building except it floats and it has the power to go places. And cer it certainly does. And I'll talk about that in a minute. All right, so what makes Cal Maritime unique? Well, first of all, uh, not on this uh, slide, we are an academy, we're a focused school. We focus on kind of professional uh, development. You're getting a bachelor's degree. It's a regular college campus. You know, you've got culinary academies and nursing schools and other types of colleges that have pared down the list of majors to a certain segment of occupations. And that's what we've done here. We're very connected with industry. So what you learn is exactly what you need to be successful in the majors that you choose at our school. You'll see a lot of uniforms. We are not a military school, but we are a school where you are preparing for the professional world, where you have some dress expectations, where you need to show up places when it's your time to show up. And we stress that during the college education. We're also a small school, about 925 students with a small average class size. So even though we're a state university of California, state university campus, we share many of the attributes of some of the private schools you've heard of, heard about today, one of them being at a small average class size. And then it's a very hands-on type of school. Uh, and we want you to be job ready when you graduate while still having a well-rounded, fun, typical college experience. So these are not our most popular programs. These are the seven degree programs we offer. I'll just talk about a couple that are most we find most popular with Hawaii students. Oceanography, you'll see there, is a popular major. It's about the study of the health of the ocean, what's going on uh, in the oceans, effects of global climate change. And if you go down to the last two majors, I wanna talk about marine engineering technology and marine transportation. Those are folks that work on ships, cargo ships, cruise ships, tugs, passenger ferries, research vessels. Uh, and so that seems to be popular because we all know Hawaii uh, lives and breathes by the ocean. 
And so uh, maritime means about the ocean. So a lot of our students have goals to work uh, in concert with the water, uh, both uh, in the water and of course, uh, staying above the water on vessels that uh, help import and export all the things that uh, the Hawaiian Islands need. So we're all about leadership. It's a major secret element of the secret sauce that makes us very popular with employers. We have a lot of uh, ways that you can uh, tap into your inner leader. You might not be the flashy type, but uh, we want you to develop what kind of leader you are. And we have different organizations that help you do that. Uh, we've got you know, some competitions. We, we do things that are semi-professional to get you ready to have great things on your resume when you're graduating and want to impress those employers. We are a small school and we have typical campus life. We've got athletics, we've got clubs. We're in a major metro area, so you, you will be able to tap in all the fun and excitement that happens around the Bay Area. Okay, some of our uh, students uh, acting it up there for a photo. These happen to be students run, that run our residence halls. We're a very residential school. About 85% of our students live on our campus. Uh, everybody uh, at our campus travels internationally. Our ship I mentioned does travel during the summers. It's part of the education for uh, some of our majors, the ones where they're gonna work on a vessel. So they'll travel to international destinations. Hawaii is often one of the stops. Even the summer with COVID, we'll be sailing around the Hawaiian islands. We just won't be pulling into port. We'll be waving at Honolulu and we'll be waving at Lahaina uh, this year uh, rather than coming into port. But the students learn engineering if they're studying that. They learn to drive the ships if they're uh, studying marine transportation, which are folks that wanna be ship captains someday. If you're in our other majors like oceanography or business, you do travel. Everyone has an international experience uh, led by a faculty member, more field trip based if you're in some of those more traditional majors like business or oceanography. All right, a shot of our middle of our campus. You can see the water there that's kind of at the, uh, at the waterside level. Admission criteria as a state university for California. Basically, as an out-of-state student, you just need to have a 3.0 GPA or above. And uh, you need to complete a set of courses that are there in that table. And many of those courses, are the same thing you need for UH. Uh, there's just one additional one, that category F for visual and performing arts. So don't forget to take photography or ukulele or uh, dance or something that's performance oriented, at least one year of it in high school. All right. So we are a state university and we participate in WUI. And so our cost is really, really uh, great. Uh, the tuition is just about 8,600 per year. That's the cost of attending class. I think that might be a little bit lower than UH at Manoa. I'm not sure you wanna check that out. Uh, but we use the FAFSA as the way to tell us how much financial aid you need. WUI is available to students in all of our majors, not just, the, not just certain majors. And there's no special application for WUI. When you're admitted to the school, you're gonna get the WUI lower tuition. We also have a special Hawaii State Scholarship called the Lyman Scholarship that those who are looking at seagoing majors uh, can uh, apply for. And over 90% of our students uh, are employed very quickly after graduation. So uh, student, uh, employers want our students and it's part of, we know what you need to know to be uh, do well in your careers. That is it, I put my information in the chat already. Uh, so you don't have to take, that, take these things down, but thank you very much for listening. And I hope we'll hear from you in the future. Thanks so much to all our presenters. We've got a little time, so we're going to go through a couple of questions and we'll ask each institution to give a short response to the proposed question. The first question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? We'll start at the top with Eastern Oregon University. I would say that um... I know it sounds cliche, but choose the school that's right for you, right? A lot of schools will are really affordable or a lot of schools will um, have that one program that you really like. So I tell students, number one, do your research, but also when you think of what excites you the most about college, make sure that institution has that. Next up, our representative from the Tim School. I would say don't be afraid to ask questions. So reach out um, to your admissions reps, 
uh, look on their websites, follow their social media, do everything that you can so that you are making an educated choice that's going to work for you in terms of like next steps. So does it have your major? Is it affordable? Is it in a location that you want? Um, do the research, ask the questions um, and good luck. Thank you. Next up, University of Hawaii, West Oahu. Hi, um, echoing some of what my colleagues have said already. Um, you definitely want to do some research and if possible, try to visit your college. I know it's hard nowadays um, if you can't do that. Um, there are a lot of virtual tours and opportunities to um, do Zoom sessions with admissions officers. Um, and so that's a really great way to try to um, get an understanding for the personality of the school and to see if, if that particular school is really a good fit for you because that's really the most important thing at the end of the day. Thank you. Next up, Mary. Thank you for giving me a chance to say this. It's hard. I used to be a high school counselor, so I want to give you all the advice and I'll try not to. I would say have an opt-in attitude. A lot of students will ask, why should I do something? And I think, ask yourself, why not? Um, so many times really great experiences happen in college and even in the college search process when you stretch yourself just a little bit. So have a why not attitude or an opt-in attitude as you're looking at opportunities that present themselves to you during this process. Thank you. Next up, Fresno Pacific. Yeah, I was gonna say something along the same lines, like have an open mind and apply everywhere. Like if you're remotely interested, apply, you know, do, you know, follow up and do the research visit maybe, but um, yeah, you never really know, you know, where you might see yourself. And I would say, don't limit your options and just apply everywhere. Thank you, Mark. Yes, I would say uh, don't remain hidden. Uh, take advantage of uh, letting the schools know you are interested in them, even now as sophomores and juniors. Go ahead and add yourself to their contact lists uh, because we have great things to tell you. And if you ever feel like it's getting a little bit much, you can always opt out on those emails or if you get some texts, but it would be great for us to be able to tell you our story in our way before you apply so you can learn the right things about our campuses. Thanks so much, everybody. We've got one more question. What is your favorite event or tradition on campus? Starting from the top again. Oh, I was like, I hope it goes the reverse order. <laughs> so uh, I, I, can do, I can do that if you want. Sure, let's try that. Go ahead, Mark. <laughs> is that OK, uh, a facilitator? Uh, no. OK, so on my we campus. Just, oh, go go well, ahead. Go, no, no, go ahead. Uh, on my campus, uh, we have uh, what's called a bell ringing. Uh, students in their senior year for four years, they've been studying to take an exam, a special examination that will uh, get them a certificate to uh, be in their profession uh, along with their bachelor's degree. And when they've passed the test, which they know uh, at the end of the last part of the test, uh, those that pass it the first time all the way, they get go to the center of campus. There's a huge brass bell. It rings throughout the hillsides. A lot of pictures are taken. It goes up on social media. So that's ringing the bell ceremony. Uh, here, Jorge with Fresno Pacific. I would say um, my favorite tradition as a student and, and a staff member is our uh, yearly Thanksgiving luncheon where we open up the gym and we have all the tables and chairs and decorations set up for a big Thanksgiving uh, meal we have together uh, before we go off break. And it's just really awesome to have everybody there. You know, being a small campus, we're like able to have everybody uh, share a meal. Food's good and we have like a speaker and everything. So um, yeah, it's a great event. I look forward to it uh, every year. Um, can I share my screen? Is that okay? I know that that will take- Sure, place. yeah, go quick. Okay, very quickly. Um, this is my favorite tradition at Willamette. Um, at, during opening days, during orientation, our students all light a candle and start their journey at Willamette by placing a candle in our meal stream, which runs through our campus and kind of represents what students will do during their four years, which is grow and travel and progress through their education. So that's one of my favorite traditions here and I'll stop sharing my screen now. But this is a picture of matriculation during normal years. Hi. And at UH West Oahu, um, 
one of uh, a big favorite it's called west and relaxation so it's a play on words because we're west oahu rest and relaxation and this happens before finals every semester it is um a series of activities to help students um de-stress and not feel so anxious about um as anxious about um exams and so we offer um mini massages um smoothie station um, a lot of food is involved um, and just opportunities for students to just kind of hang out together. Um, the great thing is that also faculty and staff get involved as well, especially with those massages and the, the free food. So it's just really a fun time for our students to come together before exams and just kind of relax a little bit. Um, I would have to say that my uh, at the UH Manal campus, um, in particular, the Tim School also, graduation in Hawaii is unlike graduation probably anywhere in the world. So graduation events can be very fun. And the Tim School Scheidler College of Business does specific graduation for graduates of the business school. This past year with remote learning, we did a drive-through graduation, um, took pictures, put on our social media, gave gift cards, all that fun stuff. Um, so that would be a favorite tradition on campus. Thank you. Last up, our presenter from Eastern Oregon. Yes, I lost track of everyone in that. And I was like, is it my turn again? Um, so my favorite tradition happens around the holidays. The president hosts a holiday dinner um, for every student, um, faculty, and staff member. And I, there are all sorts of different stations, much like what Michelle described. Um, but this happens during the holidays. It's a lot of fun. And we were a little upset we didn't get it um, in 2020, but we look forward to hosting um, a holiday festival this coming December. Thank you. We're at time today and that'll conclude our fair. We wanna thank our presenters and all our students for joining. Note, we've got a quick survey out there for anyone that's interested. So please go ahead and take that. Also another reminder that there are more sessions available. Lastly, I'll leave you with the fact that the recording will be available at strivescan.com slash Hawaii. So thanks everyone for joining and hope you have a good rest of your day.